James the Lesser, we don't know how to do any pulls with anything yet. Like, I'm looking to do pulls with Nightbot and stuff, and I think it would still work here on YouTube like we were trying to get it to work on Twitch. Here we go. Hello. Welcome to James the Lesser Express Lane, where we get you in and out as best possible. DSP being DSP at his best. In this case, worst. Is there really a difference? No. Let's watch and listen. <laughs> the super cut. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people do that, right? They go back through their content. They'll go through a playthrough, they'll do a super cut that's like two hours long of a game playthrough, which is the best parts of the playthrough. Or, right, they'll do uh, a montage that's like several hours from like a ton of, ga of, of streams or games. But I Keep guess a close eye on his movement. Is rocking? Gameplay. I guess they would do advertising in it. Oh, boy. Like, why are you rocking thinking, back and forth? There's no <laughs> reason for you to be doing streams, that. You saw the advertising live, and you think, oh, I gotta make a buck on this, and ad revenue on YouTube is shit, so I'm not gonna make much money if I just do this like this, so let me put a bunch of ads and product placements inside of the Supercut to make extra dough. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I've never I've never watched any of these. I don't know. I'm just speaking from what Battleduck said. So, okay. Well, if you've never watched it, then how would you know that's what they do? Just saying. <clears throat> um... Wait, a shit out of the content creators. All right, creators. so that's what's going on this week for this for the uh, schedule. Okay, I hope that sounds good to all of you. Um, <clears throat> sounds like a couple trash. good things. Um, a couple Pause this train of thought. A couple quick things. Uh, as I told you guys, I actually actively now use the YouTube Studio app to track uh, how things are going on DSP Gaming on a daily basis. Yeah, it's this is. I'm just gonna let you hear. Probably agree with me. But we'll let him go first. It's pretty fascinating to look at some of these stats. Um, and actually see how videos are doing. In particular, like, you get to see views in a certain time frame. And is that in line with other videos that you upload? You get to see imp impressions, click-through rate. I don't even know what that means. Mind you, this is a tool that's been on there for years. He could have been doing this with his videos for years. Mr. I'm going on 14 years of creating content on YouTube, guys. You could have been doing this for years. You could Sorry, I know I said I was going to watch this video as often as other first, videos. But... The click-through rate is looking good. But what is a click-through rate on a fucking video? What are you clicking when you're watching a video? Where do they get their terminology from? I swear, like, YouTube itself, seriously, YouTube itself uses its own, like, brand of terminology. So you try to read data on a channel. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck this means. What is this saying? I don't know what that... What the fuck is a click-through rate? I click on the video to watch it, but I'm not clicking through a video, or maybe that's what it means. How many people click through the video as it plays? How the fuck do I know? And how does this pertinent information to my channel? I'm looking at, like, what the hell does that mean? It says it's good. It's like, oh, oh, it's 2.8%. Good job. Great. What the fuck? Uh, okay. <laughs> you know? Google is your friend. All you gotta do is Google it. Just saying, DSP. I don't know. YouTube thinks that it's a television station. YouTube has always thought that it's a television station. It's not a television station. It's nothing like TV. Yet they actually have these metrics and things that like an actual TV station would use to try to judge their programming. So Tess is saying, CTR means the percentage of people who will see your video in their feed and then they'll click on it. <clears throat> Way to have chat tell you how it goes. All you had to do was Google it. But yeah, that's what it means. It's let's say right, you watch a video and then like little screens pop up at the end, like, oh hey, here's some other videos you can look at. Move your mouse over it. There's an impression. Eh, don't care. Move your mouse over another one. Don't care. Move your mouse over another one. Oh, that one looks interesting. Click. Obviously, the more people that move their mouse over your thumbnail or the little end screen deal. You know what? I guess I'll watch it. Click. Honestly, the better. But now Big Papa Phil says, no, it's the amount of time your video is clicked on divided by how many times it's shown to a viewer. <laughs> now, no, Swaggin says, click-through rate is the ratio of users who click on a specific link to the number of a total users who are viewing a page, email, or advertisement. Literally, I just asked you guys, what is click-through rate? And three people... They're fucking with you, DSP. It literally means... Again, move your mouse over the video. Get like the little preview screen on them. Kind of like what Pornhub does. Which then YouTube ripped off. But like, all right. Nope. 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 Next one. Like, ah, oh, that one looks interesting. Click. That's that's all it is, DSP. Calm the fuck down. People gave me three completely different answers. 
gee, I wonder why it's confusing trying to figure out YouTube metrics, right? Like, I'm pretty sure if they actually cared, they could use terminology on here that normal people could understand, right? Not some fucking but you're not normal. industry analyst who has to fucking have years of, of education to figure out what the fuck this means. Google it. You know what I say? <laughs> Ten seconds of Google. I just scratch my head. Like, the good news is, you know, I'm taking a look at everything on DSP Gaming for this year. It's been it's been good. Everything's been up when it comes to every statistic. Like every statistic is basically saying either it's as good or better. And in particular, things that make me feel good, watch time and is revenue. up by actually a pretty big percentage. Um, which is good. When I take a look at things like reach, apparently reach is up. Whatever that means, impressions is up. The impressions click through rate is up. Good. Engagement is way up, and that's the good thing. Like I really feel like telling you because guys, you hey guys, finally, you like what I'm doing. Because you finally turned on comments. You delete most of them because he has it set up that he has to review every single comment, so he deletes most of them. But you actually have comments on. Congratulations, DSP. You're finally doing something on YouTube. Like it. Like, literally like it. When you're watching this stream right now, you enjoy the pre-stream podcast and the fact that I do a podcast every day with you guys, please give it a like. If you're liking the gameplay from the stream today, please give it a like. And I think me doing that is working already. Like, within a few weeks of me just doing it, it's telling me my engagement is increasing, okay? Now, engagement increasing when you're just doing downtime stuff isn't a big deal. But engagement increasing when you're doing new stuff is a big deal. Because when I'm playing the big new games next month, and I want people to watch me play them. We're getting that kind of engagement on a hot new release. Like, I'll tell you, on a premiere stream of, Elden say, Ring. Dying Light 2 or Horizon Forbidden West or Elden Ring, if we can get every person who's watching the stream to give it a like and give it, like, hundreds and hundreds of likes, that's great. That's probably going to get a lot of new people to see the content. And then you'll immediately delete the video afterwards. That's the thing he doesn't seem to understand. He's like, guys, click on the stream while it's live. Well, help me out. How? Because as soon as the stream is over, you delete it. So all that engagement on that stream is gone. You then have to wait for them to watch the upload and then click the like on that. Which, this pay pigs probably has five, ten of them every day, no matter what, will watch every single video. Click thumbs up on every single video. Just It's what they do. They have nothing else better to do in their lives. And come check it out, you see. Today, for this game, to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to do that much. I still appreciate everyone liking the stream today and helping He's out. He's playing Rainbow Six Extraction, by the way. This game, I don't think it's getting much attention. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> and by the way, just so you guys know, as I said yesterday, I was talking about this yesterday on in the gameplay. Top playlist right now, what happens is YouTube takes a look at your playlist and who's watching what. Elder Scrolls Anniversary Edition is ridiculously popular. Every, like, just... Because everyone was watching the part where you attacked NPCs. They went, what? The guards are attacking me? I should kill the guards. What? The guards don't like it when I kill them. Guys, the game is broken. It's really, a lot of people are watching that playthrough from the playlist, which is great. So thank you for Snort. that. Because that's a playthrough right now that I'm really enjoying, and I can't wait to keep going. It's going to be one of those lengthy, chill playthroughs, and the fact that there's this much engagement early on in the playthrough is a good sign. I just hope that people will keep it up and keep watching and engaging in the, that content. Some of the feedback people give me in the comments of that playthrough have helped tremendously in the playthrough itself already. So that's like, awesome. Like, don't attack the guards. Don't kill the guards. Don't then go back to town after okay. escaping, um, going, what? They're still going to attack me because anyway, I attacked them? You know, I really like this app because it has, at a glance, it gives me a ton of information. Um, Again, you've been doing this viewers versus new viewers. for years. It's kind of cool. Essentially, what it's telling me is the vast majority of people who watch my content are returning viewers. Uh, actually, there's about two to three times as many returning viewers as there are new viewers to my content. This is not shocking news. As I told you guys, when you have almost no discoverability... You get a hardcore fan base that comes and watches everything, and it's your very hard for people to check out your stuff because you just don't show up anywhere. And that's always been the problem with DSP Gaming over the years, is that the channel just doesn't show up anywhere. And when it doesn't show up, you can't get anyone to check it out for the first time, and it ends up just being word of mouth. Someone saying to someone, hey, Phil's cool, check out his content. You see? No one says that. Also, you've had this issue because you did not allow comments. Even negative comments are good for interaction for your channel. And he would also hide the thumbs up, thumbs down. He hid that shit on a bunch of videos for years. Because, ah, but then people see all the negatives. What? You can't see the negatives publicly anymore? All right, I guess I'll allow it to be viewed publicly on every video now. Wow, my interaction went way up. Yeah, because you're finally showing shit now. Instead of hiding it. See? <clears throat> <laughs> Hold 
the one thing, uh, the, the two things that really need to be worked on, I feel, is I need to work on getting more subscribers to the channel overall every month because there is steady growth and it's roughly around 500 new subs a month. Just being honest, yeah, that's about what it looks like it is. It looks like it takes about a week or two to get a few, uh, a few hundred new <laughs> subs in and within a month, about 500. Right now, if I keep getting 500 subs a month, likely I'll be at like 198,500 or almost 199,000 subs by early April, but I want 200,000. Wait for it. This is, I mean, we put us the regular speak is this is what made me want to do this video. I really want to hit that 200,000 subscriber landmark by the first week of April. And by the way, I want those people to watch the content because this was always something that got me on YouTube back in the day. It's funny because now we're talking about stuff that back in the day used to affect YouTube and I didn't talk about it for the longest time. And now it's actually pertinent again because I'm a full-time YouTuber. Back in the day, it didn't even matter what views you had. It was subs. And that look, think about how stupid this is, okay? Nice, so Nort. Why do you keep rocking and moving around, dude? Sit there and look in the camera. Someone back in the day would have a million subscribers on their YouTube channel. That would piss you off because they're better than you. Half as many views as DSP Gaming was. I know that sounds stupid. Maybe because, oh, I put up an hour and 10 minute video. Got 700 views. Snort, I put up 57 videos. And each video got 20 views. I got more views than this guy did, but he, he has more subs. Guys, it's bullshit. Yeah, because to watch that same hour and 10 minutes of video, you got to watch 57 bits. Want to watch his hour and 10 minutes, you got to watch one video. I get the math is hard for you, DSP. But that's why you would get more views on DSP Gaming than some other channel. Because for you, you'd be uploading 50 plus videos a day, 10 minutes long each. Well, they'd be putting up one video, maybe two. But each one being an hour plus long. But that's true. That the subscriber count back in the day used to be what everyone judged the quality and popularity of a YouTube channel off of even though it literally has nothing to do with the quality or popularity of the YouTube channel, that it should be about based on how many people are actually watching content and how many views the channel is bringing in, right? I don't care if you have 20 billion subscribers, right? If only 10 people watch your videos. Really, motherfucker? 195,000 subs? You struggle to break 1,000 on your gameplay videos. Your daily raps and your podcasts will usually break that. But you struggle to break a thousand views on your gameplay videos, Mister One Hundred and Ninety Five Thousand Subs. Who cares? What's just, it's just a fucking purposeless number, all right? And you know, kind of on the flip side of that, that's kind of the situation that I'm in today. This channel has one hundred ninety-seven thousand and growing subscribers, but how many views do I really get on my content? You do not Nothing have one hundred ninety-seven thousand. Let's be honest. You have one hundred ninety-five thousand. Stream gets about. 300, 400 viewers, maybe, sometimes even less, right? Uh, videos, if it's a new playthrough, maybe my first part will get five to 10,000 views and it really tapers off from there and goes down to like 1,000 views per video over time, if I'm lucky, you know? And you might say, well, why did that happen? Because I didn't care about this channel. I gave up on YouTube five years ago, you know? Like, I put my, 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 my full-fledged backing. I busted my ass in 2016. You've never busted your ass in anything. Part. When I made KO Gaming and I really worked hard to make edited content for you guys for a year. And yeah, I that 195,000 subs. Where the first half of my schedule I checked was my phone. streaming and the second half was me Over 60,000 views. That was probably some of the most stressful work that I ever did because it was like I was... Stressful, guys. I had to sit there and play video games. Shut the fuck up. Doing two jobs in one day. I was a, a streamer of content in the, day, in the daytime but then I was a, a, a full-time YouTuber slash editor at night. I was putting out just as much content on KO Gaming as any other YouTuber would put on their channel while I was also doing raw gameplay every day, all day. <clears throat> so I was. And where do you think they were getting their gameplay videos from? I wonder. Definitely overworked that year. 100%, I can tell you guys, I was totally overworked in 2016, okay? You were playing video games. You are not overworked. I sit down, I play eight hours of Fallout 4. Just because, like, oh, I didn't keep track of time. Oh, shit, it's that late? All right, I gotta end the stream.
you guys i played almost three hours of fallout guys i almost died shut the fuck up okay now by the way it paid off because ko gaming actually blew up in popularity right and then you abandoned it because you're an idiot viral that got one video got over a million views it was the stupid worst game ever video for Homefront the revolution but it's not that, that bad that a game. kind of leaked into all the other videos that i although caveat is i played it years later apparently they had enough patches that came out was when it first came out that it is now actually a pretty good game at least it's not as buggy glitchy as it used to be your opinion may differ on if it's actually a good game or not i did on the channel you know, reviews that I was doing on that channel got anywhere from 10,000 all the way up to like 100,000 views in some cases. Which, by the way, not every video needs to get a ridiculous amount of views. As long as your videos are getting a decent amount of views, it's profitable. Like, I was making a significant amount of income on that channel. Even though the videos were only getting between like 10, 20, 30,000 views, it was worth it to do edited content because it was profitable at the time. Okay? One penny would make a video profitable for you. Because you're reviewing a game you already got paid off from the ad revenue, from the tips, from the super chats, from the cheers, depending on which platform he's on at the time, from the whatever else is Patreon. The second you started a game, it was already paid for. A lot of times it's because, all right, guys, you paid me $10,000 last month, uh, so you get to vote on which game. All right, this game won. Well, then you use some of the money you got from the month before to pay for that game. The game was already paid for the month before. So if you do a review of it and you get a single fucking penny, that review is profitable. So it's just more work than you're willing to do because you're... I get it, DSP. You're fucking lazy. I can be lazy at times too. But I've never been... Huh. Every time I put a video on this channel it gets 100,000 views? No, I'm going to just sit here, get drunk, play WWE Champions instead. I think that's probably what helped kill KO Gaming. Was that KO Gaming was cutting into WWE Supercard, Dragon Ball Z Token Battle, WWE Champions. Like it was cutting into his time to just sit there and play mobile games. It was. It was a good year. And back then, that was it was kind of the opposite because I had a lot of subscribers on DSP Gaming... But as I focused on being an edited style content creator and then the year after I became a full-time streamer, the focus on DSP Gaming just went completely out the window. So from the years 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and half of 2021, almost five years, I didn't care about this channel. I just threw archived, oops, I threw archived content on it. I never talked about likes. I never talked about engagement. I never talked about subscribing. Nothing. I didn't give a fuck, right? And then again, first of all, great burp right into the microphone. Second of all, then it came to bite you in the ass. You are... The... When they had the saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket, this guy is what they're talking about. He put all of his eggs into the blip TV. Oh no, apparently pretending to be a Nazi exterminating the Jews is considered bad guys. I didn't know. I was only a 28-year-old pig roach at the time. How was I supposed to know at the age of 28 that exterminating the Jews is bad? They kicked me off the site. What do I do? Help! Then he goes to YouTube, he has Machinima. They save his ass, but he puts all his eggs into Machinima. And then that goes south. Guys, what do I do? Help! Laveria. Then you go to Curse, and you're on you're streaming on Twitch. But then he puts hundred percent of his eggs to the Twitch basket. With no thoughts of, huh, what if something goes wrong with Twitch? What if the company goes under? What if I get banned? What if I get kicked out of the partnership program? Nah, screw it. I don't care. Put all my eggs in one basket. Imagine if, even when he was full-time streaming, he would still say, Hey guys, you're watching this over on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And of course, left comments on. And leave a comment down below, guys. That'd be great. Gee. He probably would have broken 200,000 subs by now because he would have had the engagement on the videos he was putting on there. He's going to push up. Oh, that's the other thing. One thing he's mad about, the one reason why he's, well, one of the many reasons, but one reason why he's trying to push engagement because he's sick and tired of, 
Oh, Agent Proper. Oh, a three-year-old LSB video. Oh, James Lesser. Oh, GTG. Oh, Hey Army Watch. Finally, DSP Gaming video. Which, not a joke. He'll be in the seventh on like, oh, let's see, Dark Side, Phil, Skyrim. How come my videos pop up seventh? Everyone else is above me. All the people shitting on me for attacking an NPC and then attacking the guards and killing the guards and screaming that the game is broken because the guards are fighting me after I kill the guard guys is bullshit. How come they get their videos before me? Well, let's see. Oh, your video has three thumbs up. Again, 195,000 subs. Three thumbs up. Two comments. One of them from a bot. Let's go over to... Hate Army Watch. Let's go over to DSP Archives. Let's go over to literally any other channel. Oh, they got 22 thumbs up. Nine comments. And they got a lot more views. Even if they only have 800 subs. They still get more views than you. Because I'm like you, Mr. 195,000 subs, 135 views. The people that are subbed to those channels aren't dead. They didn't sub to that channel 13 years ago and then be like, God damn, this guy's flooding my inbox with 50 plus videos a day. I'm going to turn off the alerts on that. No, they put up a video a day. Maybe two if you're lucky. So people sub to them, turn a little bell on, like, oh, I got five notifications. One of them's from that channel. I'm gonna go click on it. And uh, that's what happens when you have a channel like this. That thank God I have legacy viewers and people who watched because I've been around for so long. But if it weren't for you guys who kind of stuck around this channel, definitely kind of got, could have been defunct and completely fell apart. Um, and I'm gonna be honest. Everyone said. Twitch was the future of streaming. You got to go to Twitch. You got to make a living on Twitch. Isn't it funny how now people aren't really saying that anymore? Even though Twitch is still the number one. You're not saying that anymore because you so got kicked off the partnership. Negatively with Twitch over the last couple of years that a lot of people are like, man, there doesn't seem to be a future there. When, with all the messed up stuff that's happening and everything, right? Um, so the future is always yeah, like, like, slurs like, this on this stream, thing. just saying. I understand that this channel has a lot of subs and very few views compared to the amount of subs that it has. What I want to do, <clears throat> I want to bring people to the channel to subscribe and actually watch the content. You know, again, subscribers are just a number. When you have a million subs, but you weren't making as many views as a channel that had one tenth of your subs, who cares? And that's how it used to be back in the day. I was the flip side of who I am today. I was the guy with almost. Because once again, they would put up one video, 800 views. You would put up 57 videos and then get 20 views per video wow i'm getting more views than them yes because they put up a single video so all their fans would go and watch that one video while you put up 57 views for videos so then you get 20 views per video wow imagine that you got more views because your fans had to watch 57 different videos to see the exact same amount of content almost no subs but tons of views right <clears throat> so what i need to do <clears throat> I need to bring people to this channel that are going to actively engage in the content, watch it, and subscribe and actually every, uh, you Not know, touching be your a face. part of the community as opposed to someone who just drops a sub and vanishes and ghosts everything. You know? Um, trust Not me, there are a lot face. of ghosts on this channel. It's like a fucking haunted house here. <laughs> it is. It's like Jesus. Look at this. 190,000 subs. Where, are, where is everyone, right? These are legacy subs, really. They ran away because they didn't want to deal with your bullshit. Well, most cases. Keep your hands out of your mouth. What the fuck are you doing? So. Stop putting your hand and your fingers through your hair and putting your fingers in your mouth. Stop putting your fingers in your mouth and putting them in your ears, mister. I don't know why I keep getting ear infections. Stop scraping shit off like scabs, whatever the fuck it is, off your body and then putting it in your mouth. You're on camera. Not back when you weren't on camera for this part. All right, you could get away with that. Are you on camera now? We see you picking your nose and then eating it. We see you picking your ear and then eating it. We see you scraping something off your body and then eating it. It's gross. That's what I want between now and April, you know. So when I'm looking at these statistics and I'm saying, okay, it's saying right now I'm bringing in 500 new subscribers a month. Great. I mean, think about that. In one year, that would mean I bring in over five, six thousand new subscribers, and those are likely going to be active viewers. 
that's not legacy shit that no one pays attention to. People who are coming in now and are going to subscribe to the channel, they're subbing because they want to get notified of the content. They want or they want to troll you, but they have to be subbed for 24 hours. They wait 24 hours, they post snort in your chat, you lean in manual ban, and then they're gone. But guess what? They're not going to keep watching your videos. Again, that's why you have 195,000 subs, 195 views. They want to actively participate in chat on the streams. That's why they're subbing. That's not touching your face. Right? It's not like it used to be where it was the popular thing to come to someone's channel, just click subscribe and never show up ever again, which is how it used to be back in the day. Snort. So, hopefully, things will go well. And what I'm really hoping, like, I've already told you guys this, I'll say it again. Next month, February, we got a lot of new games coming out, right? High profile games. It's funny because now, I, the, the games that I was thinking of Sifu, Dying Light 2, Horizon Forbidden West, King of Fighters 15, Elden Ring. Just those five games alone is enough for the whole month. Then someone was like, Phil, you're going to check out Crossfire X? You know, that game from, like, former Call of Duty devs that's coming out on Game Pass in February? I was like, huh? That game's coming out in February? It is? Really? Are they stupid? Like, who's going to play that? I'm not saying I won't check it out if I have a chance, but that's probably a bad idea. The month already is going to be jam-loaded with so many new games, and now you're telling me that game's coming out too? Like... But what I'm saying is, February is going to be so crazy busy for big new releases. that. I and you'll still be playing Lost Judgment and Street Fighter. I know for a fact, when big new releases are coming out, that brings more people to my channel for visibility purposes. They want to see, gee, how is Phil going to think about this new release or that new release? How is he going to play it? Is it going to be funny where he fails or will he think it's a great game and do well? I mean, take a look today. Today we're playing Rainbow Six Extraction. I kid you not, for those who are watching on demand, you wouldn't know this. We have over 400 people on the pre-stream today for this game. <laughs> so now imagine when I'm actually playing some good games coming out in February that are actually like uh, anticipated games people want to see. So this isn't a good game? Then why are you playing it? See? You see what I'm saying? Why not play more Lost Judgment or something else to get through it so you beat it faster? So it's beaten by the time you got to start February. That's awesome. And uh, I hope that... You guys will be along for the ride in February because it's going to be a crazy good month, I feel. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of new people coming by, a lot of old people returning to watch these playthroughs and check out all the new games. Right now it's kind of dead. You know, what can you do? Okay. Um. So, ladies and gentlemen, just a few quick housekeeping things, and then I think we're going to get to shout-outs. I don't have a lot to talk about on the pre-stream today, and there's literally, like, no gaming news again. So I'm going to talk about on the pre-stream, huh? You've only been going on for almost an hour during this pre-stream. I'm not even covering all of it. Well, that, guys, I think I'm going to let you go. Thank you for watching. As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have one hell of a day.